Can I, can you hear me? Good morning. I think that um, we can all agree that the audience in this room this morning is by far the most important here um, assembled in Stockholm this week. Do we agree? Woo! Absolutely. It's amazing to be here with you all at the World Youth Assembly and to see such energy in this room. Just between me and you, I am sad to say that it's been quite a few years since I was thought of as a youth. <laughs> um, so when someone asks what it's like to be young these days, my 40-year-old self that lives vicariously through my five children can relate more than others. I have a 17-year-old son, a 16-year-old daughter who actually thinks she's 17, <laughs> And I have a one-year-old that feels like 17 children in one. <laughs> when you look at your own children, or for those of us here who are a little bit older than I am, when you look back at your own childhood, you realize just how important and just how precious it is to be young. What is difficult to make sense of is the reality that we are continuously throwing away this precious gift, almost with no care in the world. How is it that in this world that we live in, we still fail to address the big health burdens that our young people have to face? You don't need me to tell you that the biggest burden, the big killer of young people worldwide is road traffic injury. But I do feel the need to ask this question. What is it that we are doing about it? I think I have to be quite straightforward here and say this to our leaders, and as well as the international community, that they are failing to act. They are failing to confront the totally preventable and man-made epidemic of road traffic injury. They are failing my children, they're failing children of this world, and they're failing your children. We really need to look very carefully at this and have a serious think about what it is that we should be doing right now. I have been campaigning for the past 10 years and since my daughter's tragic passing at the hands of a drunk driver. My daughter was only 13 years old and would have been celebrating her 23rd birthday this year in June had she not been killed by a drunk driver. 10 years later, and far too little has been done. Road traffic injury is too often sidelined and ignored because we all know it isn't a priority for young people. We need a new approach. We need to ensure that combating road traffic injury is made a priority. And this needs to be something that is regarded as normal. This is why, at the Child Health Initiative, we are calling for a global summit for adolescents, and why we're joining forces with those that are working on all major issues that are affecting our young people every day. In addressing road traffic injury, we're addressing mental health and well-being, violence, and sexual reproductive health. We must find a common cause with those who stand up and fight for the rights of our youth because no young person should ever have to suffer preventable burdens. We need to give our leaders no place to hide. We need to follow the examples of other young leaders like Natasha Mwanza. Hi. <laughs> we need to follow the examples of other leaders, young leaders, on issues like climate change and work together to confront one of the biggest injustices of our times. My grandfather, Nelson Kholislasla Mandela, firmly believed in the power of the youth. And he said that if we provide the platform, it's our young people who are capable of bringing down the towers of oppression and raising the banners of freedom. Let us remember that it is our youth that can change the world we live in. So let us follow their lead and together work for a better future. Thank you.